Joey D with UTV Underground Garage, and we're here in Temecula, California to hook up with freestyle motocross legend and off-road racing champion, Brian Deegan, to build him his very own custom Polaris Razor XP4 Turbo. As a Polaris Razor athlete, Deegan's got a fleet of Polaris Razor XP Turbos running around his compound, but as a family man, it's time for him to have his own totally over the top and badass Polaris Razor XP4 Turbo for him and his family to run around in total Deegan style. So we're gonna start with a brand new Razor XP4 Turbo for you. What do you want before we start diving into too many ideas? What are you hoping to have out of this car? I'd say this this one would be used mainly for my family, you know, going out to like say Glamis, Akatia. Just want to make sure it fits, you know, the wife, three kids. And then it needs to, uh, I think it's got to function. So it's got to work good, like going fast through the, through the desert still, you know, it's got to be able to handle good. So I think suspension is important you know, getting that dialed. So I would say, you know, Fox, you know, would be good to try to get that dialed in with those shocks and then uh, color would be important. Mm -hmm. So I think we'd probably do like a black and green, but instead of just being so standard, flat black and green that's been done a thousand times, I think doing maybe some grays. Let's talk about lines a little bit. Like what are you hoping to see out of, a, a, out of just the cage design? Yeah, I think it'd be cool to have a cage that, you know, maybe it was the tad lower, like made it look a little more uh, dropped. And then really the windshield is important. I feel mm -hmm. like when you're with the family cruising, it's something that really, really helps as far as when it's colder out. Yep. I think that that's good. And then you never know when you're out and get a flat. So I definitely want a spare tire like somewhere on yep, this thing. Yep, for sure. So uh, I just could see that happening. So see if we uh, let the kids drive it or something, we're definitely gonna need a spare tire somewhere. So. And we'll run some De Deegan 38 yep. tires for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, for so sure. We'll have some big wheels and tires on there. So yep. we'll, that'll help with the, the ground clearance of the machine. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely do a spare tire carrier in the back. There's a lot of really nice ones out there. And this is an idea of the cage I'm kind of leaning towards for you, which is built by SDR Motorsports. It's their fast back style cage. So it looks fast just sitting there, but it's got a lot of functional functionality to it as well, mm -hmm. as far as like the A-pillar angle. You know, it, it has great visibility when looking at approach angles going up hills. We'll put the windshield in there, it'll mount really clean for you. Um, and the windshields are nice because it knocks down the, the weather, the wind, um, and noise. So you can have a conversation and keep the wife and kids happy when it's uh, cold outside. And they have a spare tire carrier that mounts perfectly to this cage. So with doing the rear, the spare tire carrier, I think I've, I'd forego on wanting to do a rear bumper. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the Deegans are pretty gnarly, <laughs> but hopefully they stay away from the family cruiser and not want to be getting up. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll put a front bumper on yeah. um, for sure. And that will help carry a light, but it'll give you some of that front end protection too, should you get a little gnarly in the yeah. dunes and put it nose down into, into some you know angle or yeah. into an approach angle or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So in talking about the interior now, you know, we've, we've got to change up the dash, you know? So one thing that I run in all of my cars, not just from an appearance standpoint, but from a functionality and being able to have more room to place accessories is this Glasscraft setup. So it's, it's a carbon fiber replacement. It's a direct bolt-in, which is cool, but it gives us the ability now to place certain things such as like this CD5 AEM dash, which we can put in your, in your machine, mm -hmm. as well as a Switch Pro's touch panel, which we can control ignition from, as well as all your accessories, um, and then give you room to run your you know, stereo system if you wanna do that, you know, run an iPad if you wanna place that in there for navigation or really anything you want. Yeah, that's cool, that looks good, for sure. And what about, Communications, is that something that you'd like to have in your car, race radio, intercom, be able to talk helmet to helmet? Yeah, I think it'd be cool to just have plugins, like if it, uh, 
you know, if we were to, to go on long trips or go to like Glamis out in the hills, yep. it's kind of cool to be able to plug our radios in because we have so many helmets with radios from racing. Yep. So we could just bring those helmets, but just need a like a harness to plug in. It goes to no, intercom. No problem. I think what we'll do is uh, reach out to PCI race radios mm -hmm. and get a five place system mm -hmm. uh, for so that way each kid in the back seat, you know, because we're going to run three seats back there, yeah. basically, or a bench seat that'll hold three people. Mm -hmm. um, each one will have their own helmet plug-in. Obviously, you and the co-driver will have a plug-in as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have the radio communication, so if you're riding with friends or whatnot, you can talk car to car as well. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, the, as far as steering wheels, I see you're, you, you work a lot with MPI. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we reach out to Max and yeah. the guys over there and get a Deegan 38 yeah. wheel. That'd be cool. Well, we can we can probably do a disconnect in there as well, which kind of adds for a nice safety deterrent, yeah. theft deterrent, yeah, yeah. keep the steering wheel with you, or at least be able to maneuver it around when you need to. Yeah, it would be. I mean, with all this stuff done, you know, on this UTV, I definitely be worried about it getting stolen. So <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to have some security stuff on it. But you know, and I think the seats would be good too. Get some PRP seats in there, and yeah. some harnesses, you know that. I would say yeah, a five point harness, but I don't know, maybe we could, we'll see. Maybe there's something a little easier, I'm not sure, you know. It's yeah. always a little hassle getting in and out if you're, the you know, kids especially. the kids. Like, yeah. I mean. We could probably do three inch um, five points up front mm -hmm. for driver and co-driver and then in the back go to a two inch. Yeah. And maybe they've got like a three point type setup yeah. where the shoulder and lap is connected. Mm -hmm. um, and then with PRP, it's that's perfect because they make a solid rear bench seat yep. that's a direct replacement so we can remove the factory the the two back seats from the factory and use those bases and mount a solid bench seat yeah, back there cool. and i've used those for years having three kids myself mm -hmm. i'm used to building those and they're, they're really nice and they're really not that heavy too yeah. which is cool right. so let's talk about lighting you got to have lights when you're going off road and depending on how much night riding you're going to do it's always nice when you can have see where you're going when you're going hard so what do you think in lighting package wise yeah I think that's you know one of the most important things and you know, definitely KC lights you know we'll get a light bar on the top I like the small cubes on the sides I like to be able to actually reach them and turn them and adjust mm -hmm. you know I think they should be swivel where we can see what's going on around us and then I think we have a light off the back too. everything on a separate switches just, yep you know just in case you don't need everything at the time but uh, you know, I think that's definitely one of the most important things for sure. So this cage design will allow us to pocket in like a 30 inch wide right. um, flex LED bar from KC. Mm -hmm. I think that'll fit in perfectly there. And then we'll do some A pillar and maybe even some C pillar lights. You can see on this build that we did with that SDR cage here with mm -hmm. UTV Underground Garage, we actually ran these cube lights off the rear. And the reason we did that was just like you're talking about, we actually angled those out and they're not gonna be in reach mm -hmm. for you when you're behind the wheel, but we angle them out and then they act as cornering lights. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in the dunes, especially, it's nice to have some additional light going out this mm -hmm. way because a lot of times you're looking for where your next turn is gonna be yeah. and you're, you've got the lights facing forward. So yeah. to go along with what you said, I think that'll help and then we'll put a rear light bar possibly out back then that has a cargo light. Mm -hmm. So you can look into the trunk, yeah. maybe when you're in reverse, you've got something going out back as well so you can see behind you. So I'm, yeah, I'm just stoked. You know, the Polaris Razor has such a good foundation to create your own image with this UTV. So I really, I'm excited. I think we're gonna go, you know, all dark, black with the green. I think it's gonna really express the Deegan's good. <laughs> so I'm stoked for sure. Right on, well, I think we got enough here. Uh, I think it's about time for me to load that car up get out to SDR yeah. and get to work building this thing. Yeah, get to work, ready to go. Look forward to it, dude. <laughs> right on.